everybody. My name is Willie. I am actually um, coming here to say uh, thank you to IDA because um, I have uh, benefited a lot from the um, IDA uh, assistance. Our company is a 25 years uh, ISO 9001 software development company and uh, we have uh, developed many mission critical software for the last 25 years. Um, so we, it is um, from uh, out of uh, accident that I come to know about the TP program. So um, because we are lack of skill sets to move into the um, cloud-based SAS model, and one day we received an email invitation by Mr. Perry of IDA, and he invited me to um, participate in the grant to enable our company to move forward with new technologies. So uh, because of that, I actually um, uh, say to him, um, actually, I need more. I need more than just the cloud base. I need something new, such as facial recognition, voice recognition, because I face something different in the industries. In my industries, we talk about access control. People talk about um, biometrics. So um, let me talk about uh, what the grant we have done here. Okay. Basically, uh, we have uh, benefited from IDA. We got the uh, ISO 9001 uh, grant to help us build quality software in the company for the last 13 years. And then uh, we have the grant to move into the SAS. And through this process, uh, we are being introduced to the institutes called the I2R to enhance our software capabilities with new technologies so that we can be ahead of our competitions in our industry. Okay, um, in my industries, uh, one of my industries is the access control uh, systems, which is very simple. Usually when you go into a factory or company or IDA downstairs, you give your ID and then you just uh, so-called come up to this uh, third, 10th floor. So that kind of process is called the access control. But uh, that is a very simple kind of access control. I'm talking about more complicated ones used in um, police force or used in uh, some other industries, okay, including the tourism industries. Okay, so uh, we have to identify individuals. Now, just now I mentioned to you, biometrics is the most commonly used, and uh, this may not work for some industries, such as construction industries, because the construction workers uh, don't have fingerprints or their hands are very dirty and in the kind of a uh, harsh environment the uh, environment has is very dusty and uh, there are a few thousand people touching the biometrics uh, pet and it become like dirty so the rates read rates is not very good so we need to uh, look for something different so uh, what our customer wants to do is using the um, Currently, what they do is that they have, to, they have to rely on the photograph identification, which you scan, the photograph comes up, and then they have to look at your photograph, look at you, and say, are you the right person? So this is very uh, tedious. Okay? And biometrics, I mentioned already, is uh, not working very well for manual workers. So also, they need a lot of maintenance. Right? So this is what my competition is doing, and I try to do and we face a lot of problems, so we have to do something uh, better. So you can see from here, my customers in the tourism industries, this is uh, Legoland Malaysia, okay, they try to enter the park, they have to identify themselves through, through their uh, facial uh, recognition, I mean the photo recognitions, they have to read the photograph and see that all the biometric data, the face, so in this case, it is very tedious. So um, IDA actually um, recommended to me uh, something that is, uh, I, I find that is a very uh, solid technology. Okay? Uh, and this is something extra, okay? which is the, the effort of uh, Mr. Mike and uh, Perry. Okay? So uh, I've been introduced to the facial recognitions and the voice recognitions. Okay? Now let me um, say a little bit on this one, okay? Uh, the full technology actually is, you know, we saw the uh, movie, the uh, Bond Legacy, the kind of movie where they are supposed to identify the person from the million of people in the crowd, okay? And I'm not, I'm not looking at that. My technology is very simple. I just want to 
give them the identification, and then the the biometrics data come come forward. Okay, so uh, we have gone through the uh, so-called the um, uh, pro, uh, these uh, demonstrations, and then we try it out, and we find that it is workable. So we go ahead to put into our uh, uh, these uh, systems. So currently, we are now in this stage. Okay, so. With this kind of technology that I saw, it's not possible uh, to develop by our own company. So as Christopher has mentioned, okay, we must make use of all these institutes' capability to help us. So IDA has actually enabled us into this advanced technology from a trusted source and also allow us to feedback and work closely with the uh, Institute I2R to make their solutions commercializable okay and then they actually listen to us okay and I have to thank Dr. Travis who is the manager in charge and he actually um, moved forward to make it very complete for other people who is interested in this technology to use the system not just for me okay so actually we just talk about I just said to Dr. Travis I say I want a I2R facial recognition technology and he gave me this, okay, and I'm waiting for him to deliver this to me. He is making it very complete with a server version that can interface with the um, web services to the MS SQL database. Their prototype is on Excel, so I said that's not good enough. I need a big database, so I need an MS SQL database, and that is the most commonly used uh, uh, database. And then uh, he also provide me with a mobile app versions on his own. So in this case, the whole entire solution is very complete. So anyone who is interested in this, I also hope that um, I can share my experience and uh, later on, and uh, you can go ahead to uh, engage them directly. Okay. So uh, when this is ready at the end of the year, then uh, we will have a very solid commercial ready product to go to the market. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Goh. Last but not least, we have Mr. Dennis Brenton, Managing Director from Nova Solutions Private Limited. Mr. Brenton, please. All right, good morning. So I'm the last speaker. We have drinks after that? Okay, thank you. I'll be short. I have two things. I share with you a um, company I work for, actually founded, and some thoughts about the, uh, the program. So, and before I do that, actually, I will introduce myself. Uh, probably the only non Singaporean so far who who's been talking. I'm, uh, I've been in Singapore for 14 years. I'm the managing director of this company, Novate Solution, I talked about a bit. Before that, I ran for 10 years Autodesk in Asia Pacific. I was the vice president. Autodesk, I don't know if you know, it is the largest uh, developer of software in Singapore. I had about 300 people here working a few blocks from, uh, from here. So it's a, it's a big, big company. And after 10 years there, I decided to uh, found a company which is focused on the construction industry and I decided to do it in Singapore. Um, I share with you why I did this. A lot of people said, you're crazy, you shouldn't do that here, you should go in, in San Francisco, but I'm, you know, I'm stubborn, I'm, I think there's something to do here. Um, and in my background, by the way, we're talking about it, I'm from MIT, right? So, it's, so sometimes people talk about MIT as a place where you can do a lot of licensing. So I was there in 94 where a lot of things were created. And, um, and one thing you should know about me personally, my wife used to work for A-Star and uh, exploit technology, and she's not involved in my business, but when she told me, uh, when I told her I'm going to negotiate a licensing agreement with NUIS, I said, good luck. So, and she said she doesn't want to be involved, so I share with you what happened, okay? So uh, this is the company, so it's Novate Solution. We have four founders, I'm one of those, and I just showed, so our, our business is about creating applications for the construction industry cloud applications, that's all we do, that's what we want to do, and we want to be very focused on that. And you notice the third guy on the right is, um, is actually a professor from NUS. Okay, I come back to this. Some of you may know Kekwe is the CTO, and he's helping me to uh, put in place all the, um, the, uh, the, the web infrastructure and the, and the enterprise solutions. So what we do is basically we are putting in place, you know, a cloud system which enables to aggregate all the data related to a project, construction projects, whether it's 3D, cost schedule, and once you do that, you help companies to manage their processes from design to construction to handover and facility management. 
Okay, and so basically it looks like this, and, and, and we've launched our first product in March. It's about facility management, it's available on the web, on phones. We have a lot of, uh, it's about defect management. We have hundreds of defects now managed in Singapore for new flats. It's a pretty interesting and hot topic. And so the, the topic I talk next is this. We are launching this month actually a new product for design coordination where we're going to use um, some IP created by, by um, NUS. Okay. So technology evaluation program. So I'm going to be honest with you. When Mike asked me to present, I said, I have no idea what I'm going to talk about. I don't have anything to say. He said, no, no, you should come. I said, no, I don't want. He said, no, you should come. I said, okay, I'm here. So I, I, <laughs> I thought, let me tell you why. Because this is what happened, right? The company was created nine months ago. Uh, we did an evaluation of a technology developed by NUS for three months, and we just signed a licensing agreement with them uh, three weeks ago. So it's still very early in the process. Uh, I'm not a technology licensing expert. I can just share with you my, you know, my thoughts about you know, what the process was. So it's very, very limited, but I, I do that. Um, so just three things, right? The, um, I think this is a great initiative first because I did not expect anything like this when I started. But then when I realized I could leverage it, that, would, that made it easier for me. Um, I think in general, the environment for startups here, early stage, is just outstanding. I think people, you know, if you look at the initiatives from the government and, and what's going on, it's just fantastic. I don't, I don't think you find that in many, many countries. Okay? I'm talking about the, the, uh, the programs that the, the government and government agencies are pushing okay? and at early stage. I think this is... No. Sometimes if you live in Singapore, you don't realize it, but it's just, you know, it's really one of the best I can think in the world, right? I'm not talking about the second stage and the later because it's very challenging to scale when you start a business in Singapore. Very difficult, right? But at least to get started, I find this is a great environment. So to me, great initiative. Makes it easier actually to make the decision, a decision I had made anyway, okay? Uh, <clears throat> I experience, you know, the, the, the framework is great. Um, we didn't have m too much time to, to uh, evaluate the technology because NUS asked us to go straight into uh, negotiating a licensing agreement. So it went pretty fast, and we, we've signed this. Um, so I don't have much to say about this, Mike, other than that it's good, it helps, but it, it did. I would say this, right? For me, the, the issue is not the, 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 the program, the legal, even the cost, you know, if you have a business model. It's the people. It's the people you're going to deal with. I struggle a bit initially where the people in front of us in the U.S., and after that they put some guys who were much better, but the negotiation, the terms was a little bit lengthy and convoluted, and oh, that was a bit tough. And then at, at the end, it started to be better. Uh, so me, I don't see any... I don't have anything to say about the programs, how you support it. It's more about the experience and who you're dealing with and, and the business sense also at universities. I think there's a big gap between a, a research institute or, or researchers who are coming up with algorithms or have great ideas and how are you going to make this a business case and, and a solution that works for a market. There's a huge gap and I think there's a lack of, I would say maybe a understanding or uh, or, or the wrong expectations from the researchers on how much effort does it take to bring an idea to a market. It feels like when you're doing your research, you're so much attached to it that that's it. You know, you've done your PhD and you do something great and it's ready to go. It's, you know, you've done 5% of the work, right? There's still a lot of things that need to happen to uh, make commercial sense of an idea, right? So to me, that's more the challenge if you not necessarily the legal or, or business uh, stuff. And so, yeah, that's basically the last part, the thoughts, right? I'm, to a certain extent, the hardware, the legal, the programs you're putting in place, I don't have any issue with that. It's the people, the talent, you know, and how can you be successful in Singapore, um, if you don't have the right talent. So to me, that's, that's the biggest challenge. Yeah. So that's, that's all I'd like to share with you. Thank you.